in the matter of three days, 231 customers started a conversation with this restaurant on a single Facebook post. The question is, what should come next? My goal is to help, to help restaurant owners finally get to where they want to go. But more than that, my goal is to find entrepreneurs within that segment that actually know what it means to hustle. That's my goal. Come on the journey with me. Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 265. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and we're brought to you by America's Best Restaurants. America's Best Restaurants is on a path to help you independent restaurant owners find more frequent customers because right now the people that are finding you are infrequent and infrequent customers do not pay the damn bills. We all love the smell of a new car. We love that new home feeling for me. When we got our new office, it was really cool just to like walk around and explore. And there's always that button. You don't know what the hell it goes to. In our office, we actually have an eight-track player in the one closet that we've yet to figure out how to use. Well, it's no different when it comes to marketing. And what I'm talking about is that a client of ours kicked off a strategy last week, which typically is one of the first strategies we have them launch because it's desperately needed, and that is a customer acquisition strategy, meaning how do we get customers to raise their hands engage with us, give us their contact information, and then walk their butts into the restaurant and spend some money and hopefully become frequent customers. Because as I always say, infrequent customers don't pay the bills. Well, this client's program kicked off Friday at 11 a.m. As I'm recording this, it's Monday at 1.30 p.m. And over the last three days, There's been a lot of interactions here. And this is one of the coolest parts of this specific strategy. The reason this is built the way it's built is to create a form of virality. Meaning, people, when they comment on a Facebook post versus an Instagram post, that post will show up in the timelines of their friends. Whereas Instagram, it won't. So, This campaign launched, and the strategy number one is to get engagement. The strategy number two is to drive that engagement into a tool to get data. But there's a hidden strategy within here that is commonly missed. And this is the communication after the initial conversation. It's very similar to reviews. Very similar to when people leave, you get 50 Yelp reviews in a month and you have four bad ones. A lot of restaurants will spend all of their time and energy focusing on the four bad ones. And they will forget about the 46 great ones. Now, why this is even more valuable on Facebook is what can happen when a conversation is created. So let me give you an example. Tammy Joe commented, The black and blue burger for me, Jameson for the honey, both are delicious. So this could just sit here and not have anything happen to it. The client, the restaurant page liked it, and then two other people liked it. Now, here's what's cool about that. There's a pretty good chance those two people that liked it are friends of Tammy Joe's. And they only saw the comment because it showed up on their newsfeed, which means it went viral. Because what Facebook is doing, every time you run a marketing campaign, Facebook's algorithm is looking for an excuse to include that in somebody else's timeline. It's like they're creating a custom newspaper to throw on the front porch of your best friend. And so you as the operator have to give them ammunition. So what I would comment back in this situation, now I'm not going to have the exact reply, but for example, this one where Tammy Joe says the bacon blue burger for me. Find a reason to reply. You know, Tammy, yes, the black and blue, bacon black and blue burger is unbelievable. They are, and the Jameson's delicious as well. 
what side do you typically get with it when you come? Because what happens now, let's say, because on the picture, it looks like there's a picture of tater cakes, which those are so damn good, by the way. And in the description here, I know a guy that works at the company for tater cakes. It's a, if you don't know about it, it's like a juiced up steroid, <laughs> you know, what would you call it? A tater tot on steroids. But I noticed those in the comments. That makes sense. It's in the picture. But let's say, for example, you you ask what they, what do you typically pair with that? What's your favorite side? And they say, oh, I love some tater kegs with that that bacon blue burger. Well, now she just commented again. And what happens is now it shows up on more timelines. So you can think about this. This post has 153 comments on it right now. It's actually gotten 231 people to engage. And after the break, I'm going to talk about some of that data because that's even cooler. But the reason for this podcast was talking about creating a conversation because online conversations need to be just like inside the restaurant that if you walked by this table and Tammy said, Matt, this bacon blue burger is the bomb biggity. You wouldn't just smile and walk on. You'd go, it's freaking delicious. I love it too. Oh, did you get the tater kegs? I get those also. And that's important in the restaurant, but it's even more important online. Because when you communicate with Tammy Joe on this post, now Tammy Joe's friends see it. And so next thing you know, you go from this post being seen by two of Tammy Joe's friends because of her initial comment to 15 of them from the follow-up conversation. And then those women get involved, or I say women, those people get involved. And now their friends get involved. The next thing you know, it just picks up momentum. And so this particular post of these comments only had two negative that I saw. Let me look at these. I'm scrolling really fast. I saw the restaurant replied. Great reply, by the way. There's one negative. There's two. Here's a great one. This customer actually put on here. In April of last year, I took a screenshot of this and made my hubby take me there. Loved this mix and love that you have MN beer on tap. I'm not sure what MN beer is. It's probably something local. But this lady had a screenshot of a Facebook post on her phone that she shared in here. And then the restaurant replied back, we have a few different shandies this year to try and mix with, try to try the mix with two. Oh, I see what I'm saying. Okay. And then the customer hearted it. So look at that conversation. This, this customer didn't just reply to the post. They shared a screenshot from a flipping year ago. And then the restaurant replied and then the, re- the consumer hearted it. That shows up on their timeline. So of all of these things, there's only two negative out of 100 and, what did I say, 58? 153. Now, of those, there are, I'm just going to give you the exact science. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like six post replies in there. So you got a 153 minus six, it's 147. So 147 people said something and only two had something bad to say. That's pretty damn good. So that tells you this restaurant's got their shit together. Number two, it means you've got an opportunity to say you're sorry and try and fix those other ones. And then you've also got an opportunity to start a conversation with 147 people that on a minimum, another 500 to 1,000 will see on their timelines. So that is the importance of digital conversations. And what do you say? You reply back around what they said. You know, Dan said those boneless wings and steak bites. Dude, the steak bites are my favorite. Have you tried our Saratoga chips? That's what I see on the screen. They might be called something different here. But just have a conversation just like you would if the person was at the table. We interrupt this programming for a brief announcement from our sponsor. Hey, it's Matt. Okay, there's no sponsor here. Just us. We don't have advertising in our podcast. It's just us dropping value to help you build the ultimate marketing plan for your restaurant. 
but I want you to take advantage of something. We have our America's Best Restaurants University. Yes, it's not actually a university. It's an online training, but it is a great place for you to learn how to market your restaurant at a high level and join our community online and in our Facebook group. Go to abru.online slash free. abru.online slash free. Join the ABR University and let us help you get to the next level. Now back to the show. I think I beat it into you how important it is to have those digital conversations just like you would inside the four walls. But now I want to do the funner part of my job is I love digging in data. And this has only been going live for three days. And this is, like I said, I always tell our clients, this is one strategy of many. Our typical client will launch six to eight large marketing strategies, aka initiatives, annually. And those are meant to stack on top of each other so that when you look back in a year, you've got six, seven, eight things running on autopilot. You got better social media, you got email and text, you got an acquisition campaign like this, you got a VIP program behind it, you've got catering, you've got events, you've got video, you got a podcast. There's a bunch of stuff. This is just one simple step in the right direction starting off. But I still get goosebumps when I see these things right off the bat. We're three days in. There's been 231 people opt in. Now, here's what I love seeing, and I always talk to my my team about this. Number one, when people join a program like this, you're going to have a very heavy, front-end weighted amount of people who come into this that are your frequent customers. And there is a inclination sometimes by clients we work with that they want to exclude them. Oh, I already got them. And I'm like, well, here's the reason that we have to have them here. Facebook and Instagram, all social media for that matter, but in this case, Facebook and Instagram, when you're running ad campaigns, they learn off of the data given to them. So if you create a program like this that gets people to comment, join with their customer data, walk in the restaurant... The ads are going to be optimized every day. It's called machine learning. The ads learn off of the information you give them. So if you exclude your frequent customers, your best people, Joe and Cindy, who sit at the end of the bar every Thursday afternoon, because you already have them, air quotes, if you exclude them, you take away the most valuable data you can give Facebook to learn correctly. And so typically when our clients listen, which this client did big time, we are able to capture those frequent customers. And when we capture those frequent customers on the front end, it allows us to find the right people as the campaign goes. Because now we're starting it off and saying, hey, in this case, 52.89% of the 231 people are frequent customers. So 116 people or so are the exact right people. Facebook only needs 20 to 30 of those people over a couple day period to start learning. So the fact that we fed them 100 people that look like his best customers, the frequent ones, is what we need. Now the second part is the other cool part that I really like, is seeing the people that haven't been in a while or haven't been at all. And I took a couple screenshots because this just still gets me excited, even though we've been doing this so freaking long. I mean, I started doing this in 2015, this exact tactic. Gordy said, would love to stop by. Sarah, haven't been there in years. You can sign me up. There's this other one that I just had a screenshot of. That's a different one. So, yeah, there was three of them. That's two, right off the bat. One said never been there before. One said I haven't been in a while. This one, some of them said, you know, that looks great. I'll, I'll, I would love to try it. I would assume they're new. But when I look at this stat, these stats, 40% told us they have not been in a while. So 40% of 231, and this is three days, by the way, 231 times 0. 0.4. Okay, that's not right. 231. Let me get some math here, Matt. 92 people. So 92 of these people said they have not been in a long time. We got 7% brand new. So 231 times 0.07. 
16 are brand new. So in three days, we got 16 people that have raised their hand and said, hey, I want to try you guys. We've got 90 or so that haven't been in a long time. And then we've got 100 or so that come all the time. That is a great start. And if you look at this, we typically see that our clients with most acquisition programs, whether it's this exact one or variations off of it where we help them optimize one they might already have. Because some restaurants will have a website that has a, a program already built into it or they'll have a point of sale or a loyalty program or an app that has something like that. And they typically struggle with the gasoline, getting people into them. So we'll help them optimize what they already have to get it to a better level. We prefer to use what we know best, which is our program, which is the number one in the country. But we don't make any money off it, or it's not really a financial gain for us that if our program runs or somebody else's, it's a gain to the restaurant because it works better. But at the end of the day, regardless of what we're doing, it is really cool to see how this starts off. And our goal is in three to six months to get it. Like right now, this one is 7% new. 53% frequent, 40% lost, round it up. Our goal would be in you know 90 to 120 days for that to be like 40% frequent, 30% new, 30% lost. And then run this program on a continuous basis over the next couple of years to continue to add new customers, to continue to find former customers, aka lost, and then you continue to reward your frequent customers. And then at that point, we have their information. We can target them digitally through Messenger, Facebook, Instagram, email, text. But let's build a relationship. So to sum up everything, have conversations online like you would in the restaurant. And then you will benefit in a major way from what follows up down the road. See you next time. So as you know, I don't charge for my content. We don't have sponsors. We don't have product placement in here. But what I want your help with is spreading the word. If you're finding value here, do me a favor. Share this on your social media. Share an episode with something that made sense to you, that's relevant to your restaurant, that you got value from, and tag Matt Plapp and America's Best Restaurants. Also, go to America's Best Restaurants on Facebook and on Google and leave us a review. Let us know the impact we've had on your restaurant with our road show, with our marketing help, or with our podcast. And last but not least, if you want to take the next step and help me out a lot and help us out a lot, text me a testimonial, 859-743-2408. That's my cell. A selfie video would be awesome about the impact this content or our company is having on your independent restaurant. But worst case scenario, just a few kind words. The way we can help lift this industry up is to help get content like this to more independent restaurant owners, and you are the key to spreading the word. I appreciate your support. Have an amazing day.